Okay, hello and a happy Wednesday to everyone on the line. My name is Ryan Embry and I am the brand ambassador here at Travel Media Group as always. I want to thank everyone for taking the time to join me on this webinar this afternoon. Um, I'm especially excited for this particular webinar because this information was actually uh, from feedback by a given from listeners like you. So I wanna thank you for that. Um, I will be providing my contact information in case you had any follow-up questions with the content that I will be sharing today. You can also use the chat feature, which is located in your toolbar, to type in any questions or feedback. I will respond uh, to those questions personally following the conclusion of the webinar. So let's go ahead and get started, and let's explore the secret recipe to a perfectly crafted review response. So in today's webinar, we're going to be discussing and deconstructing what makes a perfectly crafted review response. Just as cooking a great dish requires a well-executed recipe, we teach hoteliers that producing a great review response involves a formula or a recipe as well. Below you will see the four basic steps to what we use as our foundation to create the perfect review response. And those steps are prep your review, review, cook up your response, season your wording, and finally, serve your guest. And not only are we going to be breaking down the recipe for the perfect review response, but we're also going to be cooking up some responses of our own and giving out some free samples to our hypothetical hotel guests. But before that, let's take a look at our first step, which is prep your review. Now, whether positive or negative, you have to recognize and appreciate that this traveler took time out of their busy lives to leave your business feedback. You need to be mindful of this fact and make sure you take the time to really listen to what the traveler is saying in their review and take their comments into account when preparing a response. So when we talk about prepping the review, use the following steps. First, See what the recipe or review calls for. You wouldn't cook a complicated dish without first carefully reading the recipe. So why respond to a review without fully understanding the traveler's feedback? Sometimes even simple short reviews can include multiple sentiments and issues. Next, we wanna gather all ingredients and tools. After reading and understanding the review, take inventory of what you need to write a complete review that speaks to all of the traveler's feedback and issues. If necessary, gather information about the particular room that the traveler was staying in or employee that the traveler interacted with. This way you can sincerely react and respond to the feedback given. Don't let the expiration date pass. Just like using expired ingredients, waiting too long to respond back to a traveler's review can leave a bad taste in your mouth. Make sure your responses are both timely and thoughtful. We suggest that review should be responded to within 48 hours, no matter what the rating. And finally, set the table. When preparing a meal for guests, it is always a best practice to set the table. It gives the guests a friendly first impression and makes them feel welcome. Now, as hoteliers, we're not hosting a dinner party, but we do not want to, but we do want to personalize our review responses using the traveler's name and thanking them for their feedback. As I mentioned before, they did go out of their way to leave you this response. And personalizing your response, setting a friendly temperament can really set the tone for the rest of the response. So let's take a look at the second step, and that's cooking up your response. So now that we have all the preparations in place, we've gathered all necessary information and set a friendly tone, it is time to start focusing on the meat of the response. So let's jump into our best practices as we cook up the perfect review response. And first, defrost as necessary. This is an important tip for responding to negative reviews. Sometimes a review from a traveler can come off as cold and unfriendly. It is important that the, the response de-escalates the situation and is non-combative. 
Instead, meet the re review with the responses that is both warm and friendly. It is never acceptable to blame or accuse travelers in a response, no matter how cold the initial review is. Mix it up. There is a reason you do not eat the same meal every single day. People like variety. Would you enjoy reading the same response to every review that you see online? Of course not. Yet there are many hoteliers out there that use the same response and this strategy for every review they receive. Writing thank you for your feedback in response to all of your reviews is as ineffective as not writing a response at all. Be sure to mix up your responses, even if the reviews that you are receiving are very similar. Both your guests writing the reviews and your future travelers reading the reviews will appreciate it. Include all the fixins. This is a critical tip for responders when issues or concerns are brought up by the traveler within their review. It is not enough to only acknowledge issues or problems encountered at, the, at a property anymore. Past guests and future travelers want to know how these issues will be fixed and how these problems will be resolved moving forward. Be sure to include all the fixes you plan to implement in response to the traveler's review. And trim the fat. People do not expect a six course meal every time they sit down to eat. The same is true about reading a review response. Trim the fat speaks to being concise yet effective in your response. Not every review response requires a multiple paragraph explanation and reply. Be mindful of future travelers reading your review responses that are still in the decision making process. Being too wordy can distract the traveler and ultimately hurt your chances of being chosen. So let's take a look at the third step, which is seasoning your wording. So now that we've cooked up a unique, concise, and effective body to our response, it is now time to season our wording. This is the, the step where we add that extra zesty flavor to our response that will keep our guests coming back for more. Utilize these best practices when seasoning your wording of your perfect response. Don't be salty, add sugar instead. Now this tip would not make a lot of sense if we were actually cooking, but it's a great tip for our review response. These review sites are the ideal platform to get your property's voice and message across to the traveling public. The biggest mistake you can make is producing a message that is both salty and combative. Travelers want to see that you can handle criticism and reply with empathy, regret, and understanding. It's this sugary response that will give travelers a sweet tooth for your hotel. Don't be bland, spice it up. This best practice goes hand in hand with mixing it up. Not only do travelers dislike reading identical responses or long drawn out responses that are paragraphs in length, they also dislike short and bland responses. Review responses that only include, thanks for your review, we'll see you next time or sorry for your experience, and we hope to do better next time, are bland and will not create an appetite for future travelers and guests. Create a review response that sounds natural and organic, like the ingredients a chef would use in a delicious gift, their dish. Not a simple canned response that a traveler reads as artificial and fake. Add your secret sauce. Now this is an important tip that is often overlooked by responders. Every chef has a different style that makes their dishes unique. Hotels are no different. Every hotel is run distinctly. Utilize that individuality in your response. No matter if you are the owner of the property or the front desk manager, you were put in that position to respond to reviews for a reason. Show your creativity and personality in your responses and demonstrate through your wording what makes your property better than the competition. So finally, let's take a look at our fourth and final step, serving your guests. We're finally ready to serve our perfectly craft crafted review response to our guests. But before we click that publish button 
and share our message to the guests and future travelers, there are a few more best practices hoteliers should keep in mind. Add a garnish. When adding a garnish in cooking, chefs add decoration to a dish to make it look more appetizing and appealing to their audience. No matter how complex and messy the process was in preparing it, the same should be true about your review response. Decorate the end of your response with a positive note or comment, no matter how negative the original review might have been. And remember, clean up any unresolved issues or problem that the, pro that the traveler might have mentioned in their review. Offer second helpings. Now, this is one of the most important aspects to review response, but yet it is often missed the most by hoteliers. No matter what the sentiment of the review you are responding to, you should always invite the traveler back for a return visit or second helping. If the review is positive and the traveler had an enjoyable visit, why not ask for their business again? Something as simple as, we hope to see you next time you're in town, can go a long way in a traveler's next booking decision. Now, negative review and experiences should also be offered a return visit by the responder. Now, although the traveler may or may not accept your offer, you give other travelers the confidence that their experience is not the standard and a second chance will prove just that. Don't leave your guests wanting more and always remember to offer a return trip. And lastly, we want to wrap up the leftovers. Wrap up your review response by including your name and position at the property. Some hoteliers even include, go as far as including their contact information, although it's not required. This helps humanize and personalize your response to both the travelers writing the reviews and the travelers reading those reviews. So now that we have reviewed all of the steps to crafting that perfect review re response, let's preheat the oven and put these tips into practice. I'm gonna provide both a positive and a negative review, and we're gonna use the steps we learned today to cook up the perfect response to both. So let's start with the negative review. And this one was done by Edwin P. It's, it reads, my stay was below average. The staff was friendly and they even had fresh baked cookies for my children when we checked in but I had several issues in my room. The bathroom sink faucet took 10 minutes to figure out and the shower was lukewarm at best. The bed was hard as a rock and I did not sleep very well. Not sure if I will be back. Now this was a two star review. So let's start working on that review response. So first, again, we wanna set the table. We wanna address the traveler by name. Good afternoon, Edwin. And we want to thank him for taking the time out of his day to share his feedback for your business and your benefit. Next, we noticed there were some mentions of some negative uh, comments within that review. So let's go ahead and defrost the situation and de-escalate it. With that, we're going to defrost by saying, as the owner, it's my responsibility to ensure that all of our guests have a clean, comfortable room to relax and spend the night in. Reading your review, it sounds like the customer service hit the mark, but your in-room experience was not up to par. So a way of addressing the negativity without being combative. Now let's go into the fixings. Shortly after you checked out, we noted that the bathroom sink faucet needed to be changed and have since updated it, along with others. With a more friendly two-handle system that has the hot water on the left side and the cold water on the right side. So now we're showing the traveler that we're being proactive to fixing this for future guests that might be reading this review. Now let's add that sugar. I'm thrilled you were always met with a smiling face by our helpful team. Now this reminds the traveler that wrote the review that there was some positive within the stay. And it also rewards your front desk staff for their customer service work. Now this is where we sneak in that secret sauce. The team will be very happy to hear your children enjoyed the tasty fresh baked cookies available every day at check-in. Now this is not a standard in all hotels, but it is what makes this particular hotel unique. So that's why we add that in here is so that future travelers can see that this is something that is unique and above the competition. 
And we also want to address the mattresses, which were, which were talked about in the review. Our mattresses are about six months old, so they're definitely on the firm side. Overwhelmingly, we get compliments on our bed, but I can certainly understand where you're coming from if you are used to a softer mattress. So we're being empathetic here, but yet we are addressing future travelers that might have some concerns or uh, being hesitant about booking there. Lastly, when we're serving the guests, we're going to add that garnish, again, ending with a positive comment. I sincerely appreciate your comments as they provided insights for future improvements. And again, that most critical point in the review response, we're asking for second helpings. We're asking that traveler to come back and receive that excellent service. And lastly, we're wrapping up the leftovers with our name and position. So let's take a look at a five-star review. A little bit different. This is a five-star review from Diane E. And she writes, we had a great stay this past weekend. We received five-star customer service from the staff and our room was nice and clean. Our first room had a noisy AC, so I went and told the front desk. They upgraded us to a room overlooking the ocean and the view was fantastic. We could even see the evening fireworks. I will sh for sure be back next year. So this is a great review, but it, well, it does need addressing as far as response. So let's go ahead and start with that review. Again, we're setting the table using the traveler's first name and thanking them for their feedback. They, although a five-star review, they did mention that they had some issues with the AC. So we do want to mention how we're going to fix that in the future and how it was handled. Now, unlike the negative review, it looks like in this review, when we first had drafted this response, there was a little too much information here. We wrote on top of, while we want all of our guests to have a perfect room from the beginning, we are glad our team was able to demonstrate their prompt ability to accommodate you. You did the right thing, letting our front desk know there was an issue in your room and the AC was repaired later that day. Now, this next part, we really need to trim the fat here because we're reiterating what we just spoke of in the fixings. Once you brought the issue of the noisy AC unit to our attention, we assigned you to a new room and reached out to our maintenance team to come and fix the old AC in your old room. This doesn't need to be put there, so we can go ahead and delete that from the review response. But again, that tip is about consolidating and really focusing on the positive. We're going to add that sugar, talking again about the great customer service and appreciating your team's work. Now, here again is a place where we put that secret sauce. We are so happy you got the chance to see the beautiful fireworks show. This happens every Friday evening and is a guest favorite. Again, plugging our hotel as above the competition. We're going to go ahead and ask for those second helpings using our property name. That's super important, especially when it comes to five-star or positive reviews. And we're going to wrap up those leftovers with our name and position there. So I hope you guys got a lot out of this. You know, we consult with hotels all over the nation and helping them, uh, giving them tips and best practices on how to, re how to respond to these reviews because we know how important it is for your business. As promised at the very beginning, this is my contact information. It's my direct line as well as my email. I would love to speak with you. We have a whole team here at Travel Media Group that actually helps and facilitates hotels with responding to reviews. You know, from packages that are just, you know, 20 reviews to help alleviate some of the other review sites, or we have unlimited responses. In fact, the responses that we saw today, as far as the example, were written by someone at Travel Media Group, Christina Seckinger, who is one of our reputation specialists. We're going to be continuing our educational webinar series in 2018. Next month, we're going to be talking about the evolution of a hotel website to just show you how what hotel websites have changed over the years and how you can optimize your website to drive as many commission-free direct bookings as possible. And lastly, we're really excited to announce, if you really like this content, that, that we just launched our new podcast, Hospitality Marketing Podcast, Sweet Spot. It is available on iTunes. 
and we ha just released a new episode today. So if you're interested, please sign up. Thank you so much for your time today. Again, if you have any questions or if shot me any questions over the chat feature, I'll reach out to you personally. Have a wonderful rest of your week.